artificial intelligence AI technologies, which developed exponentially in the last five years, are here to stay and thrive. So most legal frameworks, in particular in France and in the US, are not ready for these technological advances. Indeed, most courts still refuse to grant copyright protection and ownership to AI-generated works worldwide. This situation is not sustainable, as AI-generating tools and platforms will replace traditional methods of generating content in a very short span, time frame. Legal frameworks must and systems must therefore adapt and yield in order to ensure that the national creative industries remain competitive and at the top of a class. How can this be achieved? Let's have a look first at what AI is, uh, is doing and how it's uh, um, in, 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 in basically changing our world, really, our creative tools. AI is becoming the new normal. So what are AI technological advances? Well, AI technologies have exponentially developed in 2022, making it possible to generate various creative outputs in the literary field, in the music sector, the art and illustration sectors, the film industry, the graphic novels sphere, and the video gaming industry. In fact, I think that players like Google had developed the technology even uh, way before 2022, but they had kept it under wraps in, in fear that basically the public was not ready for AI generated tools yet. So for example, uh, chat GPT, so G for George, P for Papa, T for Tango, is a language model developed by OpenAI, which is a research organization specializing in developing cutting-edge AI technologies, founded in 2015. ChatGPT is based on the Generative Pre-trained Transformer, which stands for GPT, architecture. Its self-described purpose is to provide conversational assistance and answer a wide range of questions on various topics from factual information to subjective opinions and advice. It can be used as a powerful research tool, a site here from ChatGPT itself, writing extremely coherent and detailed research reports. That's my view actually of uh, further to, assess, to, to starting to use ChatGPT. It's, it writes extremely coherent and detailed uh, uh, responses. Um, uh, which are so well written that they could actually uh, be copied and pasted in research reports. And ChatGPT may, uh, yeah, then be inserted verbatim in any article, research paper, or blog. So think how time saving a, a, a tool like ChatGPT could be for any writer, journalist, researcher, you know, who just has to put a prompt, P R O M P T, a prompt in chat GPT uh, prompt box and say, for example, um, what do you think about the fashion industry uh, in 2023 and its ability to, um, uh, to protect the environment? And then chat GPT is just going to give you an answer which is extremely detailed, thorough, um, rational, and you can just copy and paste it into your article about this particular topic. AI writing tools have become commonplace and now assist humans in a variety of ways in order to write better emails, blogs, articles, and novels, to create email newsletter content, to generate ready-to-write search engine optimization outlines, to generate articles that are SEO-friendly, et cetera, et cetera. So in the graphic design sphere, AI tools can produce outstanding illustrations and drawings just by merely giving written instructions to AI tools such as DAL E, so D A double L for Lola hyphen E, DAL E2, which is also a tool created by OpenAI. Midjourney is another player in the um, graphic design sphere, as well as stability.ai. 
The results are outstanding as Mid Journeys Community Showcase demonstrates. So here I refer you to our uh, written thought leadership content, which you can access on in English on crefovi.com and in French on crefovi.fr. We publish uh, thought leadership articles every week or so. And um, in these um, articles, you, there are many uh, URL links which link to external content. And for example, if you were to access our article on AI on crefovi.com or crefovi.fi, you could access the Mid Journeys Community Showcase page, page so that you can look for yourself the outstanding output that this um, AI generating tool provides for graphic design. So these illustrations and drawings can in, in turn be used to create graphic novels such as Zarya of the Dawn. Zarya is spelled Z for uh, Zulu, A, R, Y for Yahoo, A for uh, Apple, Zarya of the Dawn by Christina Kashtanova, which was generated by the AI tool Mid Journey. Also these illustrations and drawings can be used to create video games, magazines covers, and The Economist as well as Cosmopolitan have actually used um, AI tools to generate two of their covers in the recent past in 2022. And AI also um, um, allows to create films such as The Crow, uh, a short film which was generated with the open AI, again, open AI tool clip, C-I-L-P. And this short film, The Crow, won the 2022 Jury Award at the Cannes Short Film Festival. Can you believe this? The Cannes Film Festival is the most prestigious film festival in the world every year. And this AI-generated film, which actually I watched and is delightful, um, won the 2022 Jury Award. So, I mean, the quality is outstanding of the output you can get from uh, AI generating tools. Also in the music field, AI generated music is becoming more prevalent with AI music composition tools such as Music LM, so Music L for Lola, M for um, Mike, a model generating high fidelity music from text descriptions from Google Research Lab, and also another tool is Refusion, a um, Refusion or Refusion, uh, an AI that composes music by visualizing it. Dense di Diffusion is another AI tool. And also there's um, another project from Google, which was the previous project of Google called Audio LM, Audio Lola Mic. And also Open AI, again, Jukebox. Um, there's also this other um, music generating AI tool, Soundful, which is a human aided AI music platform and which aims at fulfilling the demand for music within the creator community and content creator economy. At a click of a few buttons, you can have a tune you need for your project. I haven't yet tried the um, music generating AI tools because I um, don't really need it at the moment, but I'll definitely give it a try in due course um, to create, for example, the new jingle for our uh, uh, podcast, Lawfully Creative. But I have used stability.ai to create the uh, picture for this uh, particular thought leadership article and uh, by you know just inserting in a prompt message in in uh, in the uh, in the box on stability.ai website then it just came with this picture so it definitely works and it took me like five seconds to create it so it's massively time saving the quality is quite high and of course if you spend more time on you know interacting with the ai generating tool then you will get an even higher quality design or output. So, I mean, the progress is in terms of workflow and efficiency of a creative industries is just outstanding. Unlike fads, like non-fungible uh, tokens, NFTs, and, 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 and also to, a degree, to an extent, the, the, uh, metaverse, which I don't think are going to stay, to be honest. They are just, it's just not useful enough, to be honest. But AI, 
AI generating tools, this is this is a different different subject entirely. This is going to be uh, become indispensable to creative industries um, anytime soon. So you need to be ready for the uh, watershed. So who are the main players in the AI field? As mentioned above and before, OpenAI is at the forefront of AI innovation with multiple AI tools created to be exploited on various creative mediums such as the spoken word via chat GPT, illustrations via Dal E2, and music with jukebox, and also uh, films with clip. OpenAI was founded in 2015, as I mentioned before, by a group of prominent tech industry figures, including Elon Musk, Reid Hoffman from uh, uh, LinkedIn uh, fame, Peter Thiel from um, uh, Palantir, um, among other startups he's invested in, and also Wojciech Saremba and Sal Sam Altman, who are very strong AI-focused uh, engineers. So OpenAI is an American AI research lab consisting of a nonprofit of OpenAI Incorporated company and its for-profit subsidiary corporation, OpenAI Limited Partnership. The goal of OpenAI is to create safe and beneficial AI that can help to address some of the world's most pressing challenges, as they say on the Wikipedia page. OpenAI is an independent organization and its research is funded by a mix of philanthropic contributions, corporate partnerships and government grants. This organization is uh, dedicated to advancing AI technology while also promoting transparency, collaboration and ethical considerations in the development and deployment of AI. Again, here I quote, Okay, this is how they describe themselves. I'm not saying that they are all of these things, but that's how OpenAI describes itself. So in 2023, OpenAI announced a partnership with Microsoft. And on the 23rd of January this year, Microsoft announced a new multi-year, multi-billion dollar reported to be US, to be of uh, a, a, a $10 billion investment in OpenAI. I mean, can you believe this, the amount of money going into this? This is just going to just revolutionize everything, this AI technology. Then on the 7th of February, 2023, Microsoft announced that it is building AI technology based on the same foundation as Chap GPT into its web search engine Bing, its web browser Edge, its productivity software, Microsoft 365 and other products. I'm so looking forward to this because I, um, uh, our law firm, uh, Kofovi actually works on Microsoft 365 suite. So I'm so looking forward to uh, being able to, to, to use chat GPT in, uh, you know, with when, when I'm basically working on a daily basis and when our associates are also working on a daily basis. It's going to be so exciting. So we've got OpenAI and Microsoft, which are partnering up to create awesome AI tools. But on the other hand, uh, I mean, on the, like side by side, we also have Google. Google is also prominent in the AI tools manufacturing sector, in particular with its uh, uh, mentioned before um, music generating AI tools, Music LM and Audio LM. On the 6th of February, 2023, Google announced an AI application similar to chat GPT called BARD, B-A-R-D, a conversational AI chatbot powered by Google's language model for dialogue applications. After chat GPT was launched, fearing that chat GPT could threaten Google's place as the go-to source for information. I mean, obviously, as you well know, every almost everybody goes to uh, Google Chrome or Google uh, search engines to actually find something on the internet. Therefore, Google has uh, won the almost the monopolistic place of number one in the search engine field. And of course, if it if a new way to find information is to start using this um, um, AI conversational chatbots such as ChatGPT. Um, people are going to switch to Microsoft Bing and Edge to actually get the information they want because it's going to be sharper. 
you know, more accurate, quicker, uh, more powerful. So, you know, Google went uh, a bit ballistic and decided to launch its BARD um, conversational AI chatbot in February this year. But apparently it's got a few flaws. It doesn't apparently make some mistakes, BARD, in relation to the information that it relays. The media in particular, it, it has the general impression that Google fell behind on AI, in AI and on AI, in, in particular compared to Microsoft and OpenAI. Another product that uh, Google launched relating to AI is Imagen, I-M-A-G-E-N, a text-to-text, a text-to-image diffusion model with an unprecedented degree of photorealism and a deep level of language understanding to compete with DAL E. What are AI's legal challenges? The first question that one can ask himself or herself is, do AI users have rights to the output, to the AI generated output? The question of AI authorship is particularly important, especially if actors from the content creator economy embrace it. The first port of call is to review the terms and conditions of the AI generating tool in order to clarify who owns what as far as the AI generating generated output is concerned. So one goes on a AI generating um, tool website and then before doing anything, one needs to review the terms and conditions of use of this AI generating tool in order to know who is actually owner of the, uh, who owns what, what rights on the uh, AI generated output. So for example, in order to use OpenAI's platforms such as DALI2, Jukebox, or ChatGPT or um, Clip, the user must first agree to OpenAI's terms of use. In the version dated 14th of March 2023 of its terms and conditions, it is set up that OpenAI assigns to the user all its rights, title, and interest in and to the output generated and returned by the OpenAI services based on the user's input. This means that the user can use the content defined as the input and the output together for any purpose, including commercial purposes such as sale or publication if the user complies with OpenAI's terms. So OpenAI may use the content to provide and maintain its services, comply with applicable law and enforce its policies. So the user is responsible for the content, including for ensuring that it does not violate any applicable law or OpenAI's terms of use. So this is an improvement actually on the OpenAI's terms of use, which were enforced before 14th of March, 2023, because back then these terms used to state that users assigned any ownership they had in any output created by the OpenAI's system and services. And in turn, the users had an exclusive license to use the generated output for any purpose. Other AI platforms, which can generate outputs such as Soundfall that I mentioned before, still have similar contractual copyright and licensing arrangements. So OpenAI has, you know, is even at the forefront in terms of uh, uh, legalese. Um, its terms and conditions provide for an assignment of the ownership rights to the creator, to the person who's actually uh, generating the output by using the OpenAI tool. And then there's also an, a permanent and uh, free license back to OpenAI so that OpenAI can use the uh, content generated by the output generated by this user. But um, the user is, is the owner. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Most of the other OpenAI tools still um, just provide a license, a temporary license. The second legal question that one should ask in relation to AI generated output is who is the author of such output? Was it the person who input the text prompt into the box, into the prompt box on the, on the uh, uh, AI generating tools website? Was it the AI who was the author? Was it the developer of the AI or the company that owns the AI? You see all the legal questions coming out? So most jurisdictions require a human to be the author and the work is only capable of being protected by copyright 
if it shows intellectual effort, creativity, and reflects the author's personality. As AI creative systems become more widespread, can we consider that a text prompt such as a cat wearing a turban gazing at the city landscape at night from a window in the style of Van Gogh constitutes enough human input and individuality and is sufficiently creative and reflective of a human offers personality to allow the resulting image to be protected by copyright? I mean, it's a fair question. What is the degree uh, required by the judges in various jurisdictions to grant this level of individuality and this creativity and this uh, uh, intellectual effort? So it depends from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So for example, UK law permits copyright protection of computer generated works with the offer being the person who made the necessary arrangements. That's what it's called, the necessary arrangements for the creation of a work pursuant to section 9.3 of the Copyright Design and Patent Act 1998. Other rare jurisdictions expressly provide for copyright in computer generated works, such as Hong Kong, India, Ireland, New Zealand, and South Africa. That's about it really because most countries, such as France, still refuse to acknowledge copyright protection if a work is generated by anyone other than a human. Indeed, pursuant to Article L112-1 of the French Intellectual Property Code, any work of the mind, regardless of its kind, form of expression, merit or purpose, is eligible for copyright protection. So French courts, a knowledge the originality of a creation as soon as the said creation is endowed by the personality of the offer. While the threshold of the originality requirement is low, one would admit, the offer of a work must be a natural person, a human, according to a well-established case law in France. It cannot be a legal person, like a legal entity. It cannot be an animal or a software. So the rationale behind this position in, is that French law only protects works of the mind and the creations at issue must bear the imprint of the personality of their offers. Legal entities, animals and AIs neither have a conscience nor have a personality that may come out um, of the works created by them. So time and time again, uh, the United States Copyright Office which is in charge of registering works for copyright protection in the USA. Hang on, let me just take a step back here. Okay, so the system is that in Europe, in all the jurisdictions in Europe, including the UK, copyright protection is granted from the outset as soon as the offer has um, created the work on a tangible medium, okay? There's no need for registration, copyright registration. However, in rare jurisdictions like the US, you, American offers, US offers need to actually register their works for copyright protection with the United States Copyright Office in order to be sure that then they can enforce the copyright against potential infringers. Okay, so um, time and time again, the United States Copyright Office, which is in charge of registering works for copyright protection in the US, refused to grant copyright protection to AI generated content, such as a picture autonomously created by a computer algorithm entitled A Recent Entrance to Paradise, which Stephen Taller, the CEO of the company, the US company Imagination and Genes, requested the US Copyright Office to register as part of his application um, dated November 2018. And another example of refusal to grant copyright protection is in relation to the um, previously mentioned graphic novel, Zaria of the Dawn, because the images generated by Mid Journey contained within the work are not original works of authorship protected by copyright, a quote here, and since these text prompts are insufficient to qualify I as human authorship. 
So these are just two examples where the US Copyright Office refused to grant copyright protection to AI generated work content because it's not made by humans, according to them. Since copyright protection is automatically granted in France, unlike in the US where copyright protection is granted solely upon the US Copyright Office registration, no such case law exists in France or any other European countries. Because as I said before, in Europe, copyright protection is automatically granted as soon as the uh, work is, is put on a, on, a, on a tangible medium. So we will have to wait a few more years in Europe before copyright infringement litigation relating to AI generated content lands in the European court's dockets with a notable exception of a claim filed by stock image supplier Getty Images against stability.ai that I mentioned before for copyright infringement with the high court in London. Okay, so that's the only case so far that we know of in relation to potential copyright infringement um, between a uh, non-user of AI, so Getty Images, against an AI generating tool. So considering the um, absence of a work of the mind and the lack of originality of, the, of an output resulting exclusively from an AI, such creations are thus today in the public domain and no intellectual property right is attached to them. With the notable exception that I mentioned before of a regime applicable in the UK, in Hong Kong, Ireland, India, New Zealand, and South Africa, which permits copyright protection of computer generated works with the offer being the person who made the necessary arrangements for the creation of a work. There's like a handful of countries in the world which have an appropriate um, legal framework in relation to copyright protection uh, as it applies to AI generated works. This is not enough. How can the law adequately address AI in order to make it beneficial for the creative industries? I mean, evidently, as I just demonstrated, AI is just going to revolutionize and, and massively improve and streamline the workflow process in the creative industries. Films are going to be much easier to make. They're going to be much less expensive because you don't have to hire the actors, the crew. Uh, everything is going to be done you know, through AI. I mean, think about the potential. Uh, it's going to be cost efficient, time efficient, and there will be no limits, really. I mean, it's going to be completely limitless, right? An actor has got physical limits, mental limits, an AI generated avatar doesn't. It's going to explode. So how can you know lawmakers make it beneficial for the creative industries? Since so many uh, legal frameworks in countries around the world are not prepared for AI generated works. So in France, the Conseil Supérieur de la Propriété Littéraire et Artistique, an independent advisory body advising the French Ministry of Culture and Communication in the field of literary and artistic property, provided recommendations in his, re in his report uh, dated January 2020. It suggests that a sui generis right, so a ad hoc right, could be created to the benefit of a one bearing the risks of the investment, like the specific regime benefiting to database producers. So the person or the legal entity uh, who uh, is bearing the risk of the investment, who is making the uh, AI-generated creation, should be one uh, granted the copyright protection. So the European Parliament from the European Union also suggested that a legal personality be acknowledged to AI so that copyright protection be granted to AI generated works. But for the moment, none of the above recommendations have been taken up by the French and or European legislators. So the European Commission from the European Union has proposed a full step test in order to assess whether AI generated output can qualify as protected work under the current EU copyright framework um, as follows. So step one is check that the AI generated output must be a production in the literally scientific or artistic domain pursuant to article 2.1 of the Bern Convention for the protection of literary and artistic works. Step number two is 
The AI generated output must be the result of human intellectual effort. Uh, i.e. there's some sort of human intervention, such as, for example, development of software, editing, or gathering of, or choice of training data. Step number three, to assess whether some copyright protection should be granted, is that the AI-generated output must be original. And then finally, step number four, uh, the work needs to be identifiable with such sufficient precision and objectivity. That means that the generated output will fall within the creator's general authorial intent. It is blatant that the current disparities in the various legal systems and frameworks around the world, where one set of national legal frameworks strongly pushes back against granting copyright protection to AI-generated content, while the other set of smaller national legal frameworks fully embraces AI-generated content and grants it full copyright protection, this disparity will create substantial inequalities of treatment for content creators worldwide. Indeed, content creators based in the UK or Ireland or India are incentivized to speed up their workflow by fully embracing time-saving AI-generated tools and programs, the output of which these creators will be able to claim copyright ownership and protection on. Meanwhile, creatives based in France, the USA, Italy, etc., will seriously struggle to enforce any type of copyright protection and rights over AI-generated content. Therefore, French and US content creators will prefer to stick to the old methods of work creation, refusing to use AI platforms which output will automatically fall into the public domain in their jurisdictions. This situation cannot perdure and continue. AI is here to stay, like big time. It's just going to change everything in the creative process and manufacturing process moving forward. So stubborn lawmakers and enforcers and law enforcers, such as the US Copyright Office, which recently issued some narrow-minded guidance on copyright registrations involving AI, will inevitably have to yield and reform in order to grant copyright protection to AI-generated works as soon as possible. Of course, lobbies and organizations representing music and other creative disciplines will try to delay the inevitable by setting up mindless campaigns and lobbying plots, such as the Human Artistry Campaign uh, recently launched uh, to prevent copyright offices and courts from finding that AI-generated works are protected by copyright. But the floodgates are now open. There is no way back. The technological advances and jumps that AI-generating tools and platforms provide are so important and groundbreaking that the creative content economy and stakeholders at large will fully embrace them in the next few months, never looking back. Lawmakers and law enforcers must adapt fast in order to keep their creative economies and actors at the forefront of competition. Uh, I guess I will see you very soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.